So the Dolphins are playing the Texans. It's zero to zero, and I think we're already bored. And there's already been about ten flags. This the is the, the season. this is the fourth one already, and it's, it's there's the NFL. It's eleven. Tough. There's twelve minutes to go in the game, right? Twelve minutes ago in the so there's been three minutes in the game playing the game. Well, that's what NFL is this year. It's just well, which way the flags are gonna go. The thing is, is that what you need to understand is that the NFL needs to eliminate kickoffs because every other kickoff in every game there's a flag. Yes. It's either a chop block, block in the back, a holding. It's always a block in the back. They're, they're starting to turn holding into the catch rule. You don't know what it is anymore. You know, they want to protect the quarterbacks, but the offensive linemen can't hold them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just... Right. Uh, this is the Forefathers of Fantasy Football, episode number 11. Uh, once again, past time an episode. Congratulations to us. Um, how'd you do last week in fantasy? I did uh, so so. Two and two. One and one. one. I was one and one. One and one. It was uh, it was a tough week because I lost Sony Michelle. As did uh, I. But I thought I was gonna have to drop him. But I I guess he might come back. From what they're saying, injury he, he definitely avoided a serious injury, so he's weak to win. Which is good because he had terrible knees in Georgia. That's what everyone said. He was an injury risk. Well, look at Fournette. It's the same way. He was hurt all, every year in college. He got hurt. Jaguars took him, and he got hurt every year. That's why. And they went for it on fourth and one and didn't get it. Instead of wow, kicking old a field man Frank goal. Gore. But, uh, yes, yeah, so Sonny Michelle hurt. He's the only reason. The sole reason I lost in one of my leagues. I lost by three points, and Michelle got... Uh, hurt in the first well, you're quarter. You're also sick in the head. Two and two. You've got four fucking teams. Yeah, it's a little rough. A little rough. One of those leagues is a free league. It's just a friendly league, so I don't really care too much. But I won that one. Uh, <laughs> the most Wait, important it was a one. W. The most important one is the very expensive one. One it costs a buck twenty five to get in. One twenty five. Uh, and um, I'm think six and one in that league. Whose league is that? Uh, my buddy. Uh, Ron from softball. I don't think you know him. He was out Danielle's birthday party. But I'm six one in the league, and two weeks two weeks in a row I've uh, had the highest score in the league, so uh, 25 hours a week. So it's 50 bucks in one or two weeks. All right, look at you, dude. That nice little team. I haven't even paid my fantasy. That's with yet. Michelle getting hurt, I still had the highest Jesus. score in the league. I got a good wow. team. Yeah, no, you must say Well, it's only an eight person team. Now, did you draft well, or did you just. I drafted well. And so it's an eight person team, a uh, league, and I took over a team coming in, and it's two keeper league. I didn't keep anybody. And they're like, everyone thought I was crazy. Why isn't this guy kid? You, I had Hopkins and, and Brown, and I had a bunch of really good guys on the team I inherited. Yeah. Why isn't this guy keeping I'm like, because it's the first two rounds. I can get someone just as good, if not better, in yeah. the first two rounds. Yeah. So my first two picks went Antonio Brown, Saquon Barkley. And they just been. Bold. So you did pull the trigger on Barkley. Good for you. I, I mean, honestly, I. I I still don't like the pick for the Giants because they're still bad, but Saquon Barkley is actually. He's as good as advertised. It still was not the right fit for the Giants. Because no, they're in bad shape now. Dude, let me tell you something, Giants fans. And you know what? I don't want to lose viewers over this, but you gave a ton of money to Nate Solder, and he's horrible. He's, he's just as bad listen, as Flowers. When the Patriots let guys go, it's for, it's a, for reason. a reason. So don't pick up their scraps. It doesn't work anywhere. And tell me one person that left the Patriots that was good somewhere else. Anyone. I guess I you would say, say uh, Dion Lewis is doing okay this year. He's doing okay. He's not doing great. Stephen Ridley never made a team. No. He never really did what he did again. Moss at the end of his career. Amendola's not doing anything this year. Blunt at the end of his career. Blunt's just kind of a hired gun now. Yeah, he, and he, he won a Super Bowl last year, but he wasn't the starter. They, everyone was shocked when they traded away Chandler Jones. Have you heard anything about him? Everyone was shocked when they traded away Jamie Collins. Have you heard anything about whoa, him? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I would disagree on Chandler Jones. He had 20 sacks last year. He had 20 sacks? Yeah. He's well, really they got rid of. He was he the one that was going crazy on some yeah. synthetic marijuana. Yeah, that's yeah. It. And he was a little no, that's <laughs> why they released him. Jamie Collins was because Jamie Collins wanted more money and they wouldn't give it to him, and the Browns did. But also, Jamie Collins is a solid player for them, but he's not worth the money that the Browns paid him. I don't think the Browns would have paid him the same money that he would have gotten before. Because, honestly, the Browns aren't under the same management. I don't think he would have gotten that contract or probably not traded for him. But, yeah, if you're going to if you're gonna trade with Belichick or anything like that, there's a reason he's getting rid of him. I mean, Nate Solder, obviously it's a down year for the Giants, so everyone is under a microscope. But I was not impressed with Solder. I wasn't even impressed with Hernandez, who I thought was going to be okay. Will Hernandez, a right. second-round pick, he was like, besides... 
uh, the the guy who got uh, Quentin Nelson. Mm-hmm. The Will Will Hernandez was the next best uh, offensive mm-hmm. lineman it, interior. You know, all offensive guard and stuff like that. And it's not like he's been bad. It's just that people have schemed so much that they they know how to fuck the Giants up. They do, and it's just it's unfortunate. But if the Giants had somewhat of a decent line, I can only imagine how much yard Saquon one bar would have. Right, now. and it's the line that's the problem. And also, it's it's easy to, to scheme defensively against the Giants because Eli can't go left or right. So you don't have to have guys stay on the edge of contain. Everyone just goes right at right at yeah. the middle, and that's and yeah. he's he's just sitting down. And you know, time. as much as people hate Eli Manning, and I get it, it's just like you can't blame him for everything. It, it you, quarterbacks are supposed to have at least two and a half seconds, maybe three to throw the ball. He's got maybe a he's second a and a half, maybe two at the most. It's just bad. But and when he has time, he throws the ball well. Yeah, and, and for as much as Odell Beckham talks, he's dropped a lot of balls this year. Yeah, he dropped a two-point conversion, and, you know. Uh, no, I went one and one in my league, so I wasn't that upset. But uh, I, it's I'm, I'm living on fumes right now. I'm very upset with the way I drafted. I should not have drafted with my heart because I picked a lot of guys that would have been there three or four rounds before. And exactly. I, so you got to think about what can I get past. Like, I See, love, what happens to me in my drafts is I watch a lot of college football. Yeah. Most people in drafts don't. Yeah. So, like, I picked... Sony Michelle and Saquon Barkley in my one team. No one, no one knew to pick Sony Michelle. Well, that's the benefit for me and you because we watch both. You either watch one or the other. I've noticed that with some people. It's either they're big in the uh, NFL yeah. and they just glance at college or they're big in, co- in college and they just glance at the NFL. Luckily, we're both degenerate watchers of everything. Well, saved me last week. The, te- the team that I scored the most points in the league even with Sonny Michelle getting hurt, well, save, save me was my Rams defense got me 20 points. Did the, the Rams yeah. defense... Even without Tlaib is not looking bad, you know? <laughs> is anything in the Rams looking bad right now? <laughs> I mean, we're getting to the point now where it's starting to think, like, maybe. But some of the games they got coming up, I just think they're going to end up losing one of them. Doesn't mean they're a bad team. And the funny thing is, I actually didn't think golf was that good coming out of college. <laughs> well, you know what? Neither did I, but he also looked like garbage his first year with Jeff Fisher. Well, it's just Sean cool. McDermott Jeff is Fisher's an offensive bad. genius. And it's it's it gives people like me and probably him hope that, you know what, this guy's 30-something years old and he's already got a head coaching job. And the only thing he did was he asked for a job. He didn't play college ball. He didn't, you know what I mean? It's just, it can happen to anybody. And he probably... Grew up the same way we did. We watched football with our dads. We played Madden and all that. And we went outside and played football with each other. And that's pretty much what Sean McDermott does. And he's like one of the best coaches now. That's what's going to happen in the NFL. It's going to be all young kids. Right. That, you know, they just know the game through. There's so much technology now. You can do, you can rotate the game. You can watch it any way you want. So It's like baseball. The nerds are taking over. And yeah. The nerds are going to take over the NFL because yeah. it's all going to be about it's all stats. It's going to be analytics now. Who gets the most yards per carry? The NFL used to be the old tough guy coaches. Now no one responds to those guys because the players have more power. They, well, they have never, more and, personality. Exactly. Everyone's got their own brand. They want to stay. There's like a coach that gets them. The one thing, too, that people need to realize is that college players nowadays are getting a lot more publicity than they did about 20 years ago. Like, there's guys that are just now retiring in the NFL. Like, let me tell you something. Drew Brees uh, was not... A big thing in college. I mean, I besides me and Bradder, I went I mean, to Purdue. I mean, well, there you go. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna say we probably the only two that know where he went. You know, and it was Purdue. Uh, but yeah, so it's just you know the game's changing. Uh, you know, it's gonna be it, it's fun to watch, and and like I said, we're gonna have a little bit of advantage when it comes to drafts and all that because we do enjoy both Saturday and Sunday watching football. If we gotta do something else with the wives, that's different. But other than that, we're sitting on the couch. Watching football. So, uh, week seven was a little odd, fantasy wise. I got some stats here for you. All right, let's hear it. Quarterback leaders: Pat Mahomes first, thirty-two and eight. Uh, Mitch Trubisky second, tw- thirty-one point four points. The standard. He's scoring. having a good year this year. Standard scoring: Cam Newton, twenty-five point seven points. All in the fourth quarter. Andrew Luck. <laughs> 22.7, yeah, what a downer that was for Philly fans. Yeah, huh? Andrew Luck could have a lot more points than we did against those only picks. It was against Buffalo, though. Uh, Tom Brady versus Chicago, uh, 21.7 points. And Tom Brady is projected to have 103 points standard against Buffalo this week. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> a little bit of notable stuff here, and the reason I do this stuff is either a guy's doing better than expected or a guy's doing a lot worse. So I got it either way. Baker Mayfield, 20.9.6 this year, this week. Dak Prescott, 20.2, eighth. This week, uh, Brock Osweiler in the top 15, two yeah. weeks in a row, uh, 17.8 points, 13th overall. Deshaun Watson, 10.9, 21st. Yeah. And then Andy Dalton with a... Andy Dalton was a lot of guys uh, number one for a lot of weeks this year. And he gave you a whopping 7.9 points. I've never been a fan of Dalton. Never. And, I uh, like the way that he's responded since a bad, bad couple of years. He's still he's taken his... Punches. Yeah, he's still you know, trucking he's, along. Same as Flacco. Yeah, he just I mean, can't, he's just, along. The problem is, is that, listen, if you have a defendable quarterback that doesn't have a big mouth and can throw the ball decent, coaches are probably like, great. I'll take he it. He doesn't have an attitude. We'll, we'll scheme you it know? We'll That's scheme the right. thing is that I think more and more, and this is why I was surprised that John Gruden took the job because there's one thing that you never did to a coach, even in pros. You don't really talk back. And these guys talk back. They do? They'll, they'll yeah. open up to him and say, you got to fucking get that guy. He goes, he wasn't fucking there. And your coach is probably like, huh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh, I'm not used to that. And I think that's what's getting John Gruden now, is that the players are bigger than the game. And he is no longer the only person that, you know, because when he first started, everyone loved him. He was Chucky. He was, Everyone loved know, him in the booth. You know? I, well, I still don't mind him. I still think he saw... The team that he had was not going to win. Oh, no, no, so I'm not talking about now. Something. I'm just talking about he's got guys in there. The guys with the attitudes, he let go. The guys who talk back, he let go. I think Listen. when he took the job, I think it was a joint conversation with him and the ownership. Like, all right, we're going to get the right guys in here. Yeah. And we're going to have an exciting team going to Vegas. Honestly, the thing is, is that, you know, we can talk about the Amari Cooper trade, but I think the only reason they pulled the trigger on it is because they got a first-round pick. For I trade him every day first-round pick. First rounder, yes. Do you know? How yes, many, do you know? Last year he ranked first in drop passes. Yeah. Last year, two years ago, first. So you could have this year, right now. He was on the Raiders. He has played, I believe, six games. He has, I believe, twenty catches for two hundred eighty yards and two touchdowns. And one of the games he had over hundred yards. So think about that. Dallas could still have their first rounder and have Des Bryant right now. I just don't. I whatever. It's our pick, and you know what, Dallas, you. I don't think you're really going to go far. So thank you. We appreciate it. All right, back to back to fantasy here. Running back. Some normal names here. Kareem Hunt, number one, thirty-two point one. Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack making a against name against Detroit. Twenty-nine point nine. Todd Gurley, as usual, my MVP vote right now. Uh, 26.6. And he's everybody. It's him, it's him and Goff for MVP. Yeah. James White, not bad against Chicago, 21.7. Latavius Murray, the Tay train, 20.3 against the um, the Jets. Kieran Johnson is actually making a name for himself on Detroit as a runner, which is, is nice because I always like about him. About time. Uh, against Miami, 17.9. Saquon Barkley, we already talked about him. He's been doing a good job for the Giants, 17.4. Lamar Miller against Buffalo, 15.9. If Lamar Miller is getting good points against you, then you know you suck. Uh, Phil Lindsay versus that horrible game last week against Arizona. And Deion Lewis rounds out the top 10 with 15.5. Not bad. A couple notables here. Oh, go ahead. You were going to say something. No, I wasn't. Nope, you weren't. Okay. Oh, uh, well, I guess they could say everyone's kind of forgetting about Henry over there in Tennessee, don't they? He, he had a decent week, too. He was he was uh, over 10 points, too. It just I was excited about him this year. I thought he was going to be the starter really? now that, uh, um, what's his Murray. Was, DeMarco Murray. Murray. DeMarco I'm Bob surprised was, by that. I'm I, a little surprised I, I, that you were big into him. Well, when he came out of college, you know, they, they, he was just a monster. I, I just, I didn't think and he was And fast. I never thought they gave him a chance in Tennessee yeah. because of Murray... Now he's getting his chance, and they bring in Dean Lewis, and they kind of like Dean Lewis. Better. I, I think I think because Mike Vrabel is the coach, they wouldn't have brought Dion Lewis if it wasn't for Mike Vrabel. Right. Dion Lewis is I don't think he's a specialist, but he's as close to it as possible. Yeah, uh, he, he's like a Sproles. Yeah, I mean, but and Sproles had a hell of a career. Uh, the one thing about Derrick Henry too is that he's not fast. I mean, he's he can run, but he's not fast. No. And he played a hell of a game against the Chiefs. He won that game for them in the playoffs. So. Right. 
You know, I also don't think that Tennessee should have made a coaching change, but that's just me. A couple notables here. Kenyon Drake coming back to life a little bit. 14.7. I believe this is his first time he's had over 10 points this year. Nick Chubb, the new starter for the Browns. 14 points, 14th overall. Capri Bibbs from Washington. Never heard of him. No, I'm joking. He's too half. He's played in other games. Against Dallas, 11.6. Not bad. Uh, David Johnson, 30th. Seven points. He's such a disappointment. Ezekiel Elliott, four point two points for thirty seventh overall. It'll be interesting this year, this, or the, this week, to see David Johnson against Forty Niners. I mean, uh, I would think that David Johnson. A lot of people are trading. Uh, and Corey Clement. I don't know if he's the starter overall, but I think Smallwood starting. If, if he is, he only got two point two points for forty six. Yeah, I think overall. Smallwood played most of the I thought so too. Wide receivers, uh, Manuel Sanders had a great game on Thursday against Arizona. The 20, ageless Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah, 21.3. OBJ had a good game versus Atlanta, 20.2. John Brown, who was turned into a touchdown machine out of Baltimore, 19.4. Tyrell Williams, catching the ball in London, uh, 17.8. Adam Thielen, Mr. Reliable, uh, 17. I think he's going to be an all-pro this year. Who's that? Thielen. Oh, easily. Yeah. Easily. You know, don't say it like that because the, the all pros are as much of a, you know, as a popularity contest as anything else. Yeah. You know? I still think that fans don't think that think that he's not their number one, which is just silly. Uh, St Diggs is not having a very good year. No, I'm getting to that. Uh, Sterling Shepard, 16.7 against Atlanta. Not bad. That's Jarvis, surprising. Jarvis Landry, 15.7. Alshon Jeffrey. 14.8. T.Y. Hilton. Everyone's scoring on the Bills. Even T.Y. Hilton. 14.5. <laughs> what were you saying about Alshon Jeffrey? I, he's been just really good since he came back from his injury. I, I'm happy to see Alshon Jeffrey yeah. play well because I followed him all the way through college in South Carolina. Yeah. I always loved him. You know the other guy I loved? And you're going to laugh. And I got his jersey. And I was so happy I got it. It was Sidney Rice. You remember him? <laughs> I remember Sidney Rice. Did he play for uh, Minnesota? Yeah. yeah. Minnesota and then Seattle and then nobody. Yeah. Uh, I was a huge fan when Brett Favre was on the Vikings yeah. and he would throw to Sidney Rice or Vasante Shanko. Yeah. That were tight end. But um, no one knew Vasante. It was kind of like the Peyton Manning, Julius Thomas thing. Right, no like, one knew Julius Thomas. Two years with Vasante, with Brett Favre, he becomes great. And then yeah. he goes to another team, you never hear from him Same again. Same thing as Julius Thomas. That's the Dolphin fans. A, uh, another white receiver in the top 10, Danny Amendola. 14.4 <laughs> points. Couple notables here. Mike Williams having a solid sophomore year for the Chargers. He is. 11.8 points. Josh Gordon, 10 points. Not bad. Julius Jones. Um, versus the, the Giants, 8.4. Uh, Keenan Allen, 7.2. Not very good. Calvin Ridley, 4.4, 4, 44th. Marvin Jones Jr., he's 2.9 for 54th. Stephon Diggs, 2.6 points for 56th. Corey Davis, one point for 68th overall, and then Allen Robinson, you know, and that, point four points. This stuff that shows you how how, how lucky fantasy really. It's all about luck. I, I I listen like Sunday mornings. I listen to the fantasy shows on the NFL Network on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. Those are professionals, and they're and I remember one guy said this is gonna be Diggs week. It's this be a big Diggs week, and <clears throat> Diggs disappoints again. Yeah, no, he has had, and you know what? His first couple games were really good. Well, and that's why I was thinking maybe the contract doesn't matter. And doesn't. Diggs will always play good against Green Bay. He's going to play good against them like, and they could play in a few more weeks. It's just, and that's who he played the second game of the year. And yeah. No, well, his first game was good too, but I also, I knew that Cousins is good at distributing the ball, but he does like one receiver more than anything. And I don't think there's a problem there because Minnesota's winning. And that's all that matters. And I bet you, if Kinda. Stephon Diggs is a good human being, he should be really happy for Adam Thielen because Adam Thielen worked his ass off to get where he's at. He did. He didn't have the natural talent, but God damn it, he earned it. And like I said, I mean, you, you, I, I'm so happy when I see Adam Thielen scoring a bunch of points. It, I think it's, I think it's great. But, um, yeah. Whenever a guy gets a big contract, I never pick him up in fantasy. Doesn't matter if the contract goes. Starts the year after. There's a lot of people that are going to be calling him for money, and there's a lot of people that are going to be calling for investments. He ain't going to be focusing on football. And that first year, he won't be focusing on football at all. Except for Mac. 
But he's not a receiver. Are you talking about just receivers? Um, well, most position, most like the the high quality position OBJ's players. OBJ's okay with his extension. Woo! Touchdown, Dolphins. Kenny Drake. Drake. There you go. Uh, tight ends. Trey Burton, number one. He's making me a believer a little bit. A little okay. bit. Eighteen point six. Michael Roberts. Any idea? Nope. Detroit versus Miami at sixteen point eight points. I don't know. I never heard of him. George Kittle's putting himself. He's in the Kittle's top. doing well. He's yeah. in the top twenty in receiving yards at anybody. That's incredible. Uh, Zach Ertz, thirteen point eight. David Njoku, eleven point two. Dallas Goddard, the rookie there. No, yeah, he is a rookie. He is a rookie. Uh, he got uh, what is it? Ten point three against Carolina. Benjamin Watson, ten point three against Baltimore. This Chris Herndon guy again. Remember him last week? Chris Hurd in the fourth? No, I remember him. Yeah, he had another 10-point game. Travis Kelsey, 9.5. Eric Swoop, 7.7. And Demetrius Harris from Kansas City, 7.7. What do you think about is, uh, he had a touchdown getting reviewed to see if he got in or not. And the microphones picked up his conversation on the field. He was talking to another player. He's like, I think I got in. I hope I get in. My fantasy owners need more points out of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so he's thinking about it. Yeah, good for him. See, that's that's the kind of guy I'm going to want to get next year because, well, I don't want to say Garoppolo's going to be better because he really disappointed this year. Uh, a couple notables there for the tight ends. Mike Kosecki. Mike Kosecki, your man. 4.4, which is 16th. There's not going to be that many high rankings here. Evan Ingram, are kind of disappointing this Evan year. Ingram, my disappointing draft pick, 2.6, 19th overall. Kyle Rudolph, 1.6 points, which is 23rd overall. Cameron Bray, 0. 0.3 points, which is 30th overall. And it ended out Charles Clay with negative 0. 0.6 points, Rudolph. 34th and last overall. I Fuck. think Rudolph's been the biggest uh, surprise to me this year in tight ends. He was awesome last year. Yeah, he's. I mean, the problem is is a new quarterback, a new system. And like I said, a quarterback's going to have its favorites. He gets I right. really thought that Rudolph was going to be Cousins' guy. I, mm -hmm. I really didn't see Thielen be. I did see Thielen maybe. I knew that Diggs wasn't going to be this year. I knew it. It's just because I don't think Kirk Cousins likes those big money receivers. Because like Terrell Pryor. Terrell Pryor got that huge contract for only one year. And then Cousins never threw to him. Uh, it's just something. Yeah. I don't know what it is with most of these quarterbacks heads, but they do seem to have favorites. They do. They trust. do. Trust. They got to trust this year. So we got some favorable matchups here for each position, and then we got our uh, bust, bust, sleeper, and stuff. star. Uh, so the last couple weeks I've been doing it like. The names that are natural. Like, I would say, at running back, you should play Todd Gurley. We're going to change this up because you guys know all that. Yeah, you guys know that. So I'm going to try to get a little bit deeper here. And I still did go with, so it is next week. They're showing the fucking, so it is next week. Yep. Next God Thursday night. Damn it. Big game. Raiders I want Warriors. them to lose. I want the Raiders to lose. I don't know who the number one pick is, but damn it, I want them. I think it's going to be that guy out of Houston. He's a defensive lineman. He's a member of Bosa. Yeah, he was supposed to go number one this year, they said. Right now, Nick Bosa is number one on Kuiper and Machines. Oh, is he? Okay. So, I mean, hey, you got to replace Mac if you're the Raiders. you got to get an edge rusher. All right, so let's do some... Uh, Favorable matchups here. Quarterbacks is a little bit tough to get deep, but uh, Kirk Cousins versus the Saints. Uh, Saints are bad defense. Drew Brees against Minnesota. You say Minnesota's defense. Minnesota's defense is not that good this year. Uh, Andrew Luck versus the Raiders. Uh, fucking hey, right. Absolutely, for the Andrew Luck owners. Yep. Jameis Winston versus the Bengals. The team is not winning, but Jameis Winston is playing well. Playing really well. Uh, Andy Dalton versus the Bucks. Andy Dalton's being, he's playing solid. Last week, it was a blowout. It's a little bit different, but when the game is somewhat close, he has been playing well. Uh, Baker Mayfield versus the Steelers. Baker Mayfield is starting to get into the conversation about playing. You know, if you're if you're desperate for a quarterback, he's, he's in the conversation, in my opinion. Uh... What do you think? For quarterbacks? Yeah, I mean... Uh, you got to put Goff on there against Green Bay. We well, got to. You know, but I'm saying, like, Mayfield. What are you thinking about him? About Mayfield? I, you know what? It's funny because he got all this hype in the air with Tyrod starting. Everyone wanted Baker, Baker, Baker. His first couple of games, a lot of hoopla about him. 
I haven't heard much about him since. Yeah, no, I, I he's watched... He's rookie mistakes. He's well, I, rookie mistakes. I did, watch, uh, I did watch most of the Tampa Bay-Cleveland game last week because I had the over in it, and it was getting to be close. And, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's missing some reads, but he's also... The thing that I'm very surprised about is that he also knows who his star receivers are. Because he tries to get it to Landry a lot. It seems like he's trying to throw Landry more than Callaway. And Landry sometimes seems like he's a little bit blocked a little bit more. Callaway's got the looser Callaway gets old. Callaway's a rookie. they got to work on that. They'll work on it. You, you said golf versus Green Bay. Case Keenum versus the, Gi the Chiefs because the Chiefs are scoring a ton of points, but they're also giving up a ton of points as well. I don't know if anyone has been this bad defensively and still have this good record as the Chiefs. <laughs> It's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it, it, maybe. No, it wouldn't be them. All the all the good offensive teams, like there's been a lot in the past, they've always had better defenses than them. And, and they if not, they lose. That's <laughs> the one thing that blows me away about Andy Reid is that this team is put together to win right now, not in December when it really matters. Patrick Mahomes is going to have a great season. He he is legitimately in talks for the MVP right now as a second year player, first year overall, right? Experience wise. But let me tell you something: when the fucking cold, when the temperature gets colder, just wait because the Chiefs are going to start losing some games. They are, and when he starts playing guys with good quarterbacks like Tom Brady, he's going to lose. And he played well. Well, see, this is the thing that I, I've noticed about the NFL issue, right? It's so weird because it's all about matchups. And you hear that everyone. You hear, you hear everyone on ESPN say it. It's Favorable all about matchups. matchups. But it's the truth. So the Jaguars are a really bad matchup with the Patriots because they have a good defense. Patriots like to win shootouts. Yep. That's why Patriots play the Chiefs so well. It, but the, it's just uh, it's a weird. So it depends on when you get to the playoffs who plays who to see who advances. You know what I mean? Thing, you know. Like the, I think the Patriots play Chiefs, they're going to advance. But the Patriots play the Jaguars, for long, I don't think they'll get past them just because of the way the teams are. Now, the Jaguar, now this is going back, and I don't know how they're going to make the idea, but Jaguars are struggling right now. Yeah, I mean. It's, it's just a bad matchup. I just, you know, here's the thing, too. Wow, Miami's defense is garbage. They just allowed like two, four, 20, 30 yard plays in a row, and they were simple plays. Uh, so here's the thing that I want to say about the Chiefs. I feel bad because. If you've watched football for a long time, like both of us have, you know that Andy Reid's team is going to fold. Always do. And they always do. And it's just, it's unfortunate. If you want to like if you want to look good during the regular season, then have Andy Reid as your coach. If you want to win in the postseason, you bring in guys like Bill Belichick, Mike Tomlin, guys who know what it is to play real football at the end of the year. Because like you said, when you get in the winter months, that That's offense is going where right now, it might matters. Because it snows in Kansas City. A <laughs> lot. It snows in Kansas City a lot. And the the I don't know how to say this the right way, but Patrick Mahomes came out of Texas Tech. Now I've never been a fan I've I've always been a fan of watching them. Yeah. I've got their apparel. I love wearing their clothes. Thank you. But Texas Tech quarterbacks only know to do one thing, and that's throw the ball. But it's throw it 60 times. Will Patrick Mahomes be able to make adjustments when it's negative two in Kansas City for their wild court or divisional round? His hands are cold, and it's going to be harder to throw the ball. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's I understand. Not, he won't be able to. You, you, in games like that, it's tough to throw the ball a lot. So can Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes make the adjustments? That's where we will see if the cream rides to the top. Because honestly, I am I apologize for how badly I spoke about Patrick Mahomes. Right now he looks great. But he also is in Andy Reid's system, which is not a winning system. Because let me tell you something. If Donovan McNabb had a different coach that could win in the postseason, he might have. He might have beaten the Patriots a couple times in the Super Bowl. Because I always think that Don McNabb is very underrated. I think he's a very he good was, quarterback. He was. He's very underrated. But unfortunately, Andy Reid's coaching killed his career. And he, people don't realize that Don McNabb made the NFC Championship game like four times in a row. <laughs> you know, and everyone still thought he sucked. And it's like, what? No, it wasn't. Never really his fault. No, and, and, but whatever. So, um, 
Back to the favorable matchups. You got Case Keenum against the Chiefs. Chiefs have a terrible defense. Um, Josh Rosen maybe against the 49ers because the 49ers give up a lot of fantasy points. And that's what we're focusing on, not stats, fantasy points. We'll see. We gotta see what Rosen can do. Uh, another favorable matchup. I couldn't believe they had it up there. Uh, Derek Anderson against the Patriots. Derek Anderson, huh? Jesus. I don't see that. He's one. bald now. He must have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see that. He had one. a nice head of hair. Now he's bald. He's became a bill. Man, it sucks. And then Sam Darnold against the Bears. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I, maybe. I, I, Sam Darnold's starting to come. You know, he, he's making some throws that are like, ooh, Sammy. Like, <laughs> there was too many people there. As a pack fan, I, re- I, hope, I hope that's a good matchup. Uh, yeah. I don't know. No, me too, because I want to see. I like seeing the Bears lose. Because it's more closer to the... That's for you, you really want that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I haven't heard much about Max since the first two weeks either. He Well, he got hurt. He's been playing limited snaps. But yeah, still. Still. He's 27 years old, Bears. You fucked up. We got lucky. I think we won that trade. We will. By it's like a good the trade third, for both teams. By the, by the third year, Pete Raiders fans will be like, Khalil who? We love Bosa. Or the Houston guy. Uh, <laughs> the Houston guy. Uh, running backs, uh, favorable matchups here. I put James Conner just because he's playing the Browns. I put David Johnson here because he's not a big name anymore in fantasy. So David Johnson against the 49ers. Marlon Mack against the Raiders. Pretty much any Cole. Uh, <laughs> Chris Carson against the Lions. Lions uh, defense isn't as good as it, sh- it could be, but it will get better as the years go on. Uh, Chris Carson. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ken John Barner. Yeah, The New England Barner, guy yeah. against the Bills. Next man up, it's going to be James White and Barner. Yep. Seventh flag. <laughs> no, that's the eighth one. I'm sorry, eighth. Eight, eight and one quarter. Uh, Royce Freeman against the Chiefs. Once again, Chiefs have a terrible defense. Peyton Barber against the Bengals. Joe Mixon against the Bucks. Uh, Nick Chubb against the Steelers. And Raheem Mostert. MOS, most turt. Most turt. Okay. So, yeah, most turt uh, against the Cardinals. It's tough with running backs this year. If, you, if you've been playing fantasy football, you know how bad the running backs are this year. I tried to go no big names. I mean, the names I have aren't great, but they're pretty much very thin at running back. It's very tough. Very, very tough. Tight end and running back, especially this year. Yeah. It's all about the receivers in the NFL now. Wide receivers. Tyler Boyd, Cincinnati Bengals. Versus the Bucks, Taylor Gabriel, Chicago wide receiver versus the Jets, Keenan Allen, uh, the no, I'm sorry, Keenan Cole, the Jacksonville uh, wide receiver versus the Eagles, Antonio Callaway, the Browns receivers versus the Steelers, uh, Chester Rogers, uh, Chester Rogers, uh, Colts wide receiver against the Raiders. Once again, pretty much. You're really every, picking every Colt. Well, I mean, it's just you know, uh, Christian Kirk. Could be a sneaky one. Uh, Cardinals receiver against the 49ers. Sterling Shepard uh, had a good week last week. Maybe he can uh, keep it going against Washington. Uh, Chris Godwin, the Bucks receiver, has turned out to be very, very good uh, against the Bengals. Cortland Sutton, who has turned into quite the receiver, and I knew that, yeah. against with Denver against the Chiefs. And then my last one is Martez. Marquez about this Caitlin. Now this game. That's your little surprise there against the Rams. I think he's going to do well. He, well I, don't know, I don't know how much he's going to play, though. I, I think that McCarthy, I think, I think that. McCarthy's going to find a way to play him because he played really well. He, he's getting, yeah. I think, yeah. He's gonna get, I think he's going to get some of uh, Cobb's reps, not Allison's for sure. Uh, tight end, once again, very, very thin here at tight end. You've got David and 